Hello and welcome to Artigan Flight 001. This is your captain speaking. If you are traveling through another dimension, you are in the right seat. A dimension not only of sight and sound and mind, but a journey into a wondrous new vibratory frequency. We'd now like to tell you about some important safety features of this aircraft. The most important safety feature we have aboard this aircraft is your attention. Please buckle up, everyone. It is going to be a thrilling ride. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Tegan Weekly Bread, your spiritual board meeting covering Monday to Monday. I am your Madam President of the Artigan, Natalie, spelled M-A-T-A-L-E-E. -E. Feel free to stay for both of the astrology and tarot reports. Feel free to skip ahead as you are guided. I hereby officially call this meeting to order. Okay, President's Report. Everyone, okay, so I am going to change the format of this. This will be the last week that I do both of the astrology and the tarot in one, one video. And we're not gonna do the psychic report this week. It's just too much. There's a lot happening. Um, a lot of energy shifts, a lot of really positive things. But, um, you know, after the new moon in Pisces that's on my mid heaven, the top of my chart, so it's gonna be a new fresh start for my career anyway, not only my career, but my legacy, my psychic legacy. So I feel like next week's a better week to roll them out in separate videos anyway. Um, it will still be, I'm gonna do a weekly astrology, which will just be the weekly astrological aspects. And then I will do another video for the tarot for the week. And then I may even do like another tarot video, like an energy shift for maybe later in the week. We'll see as I'm guided, but that's my, that's the news. Okay. Back into, or into the astrology report. So this week, the end of this week, we have this new moon in Pisces. And so this week leading up to it, you really, we could be seeing the effects as early as Wednesday, maybe even Tuesday. And that's because on Wednesday, the sun is going to conjunct Neptune in the sky, a big part of the lunation of the new moon. And because it's applying, what applying means is, you know, things are getting closer and closer. And when they're separate, you know, when the conjunction is like, okay, that's it. Or the aspect, it's hitting, it's exact by degree. You know, if they're, if they're meeting at the seventh degree, it's applying and then when they meet, that's the conjunction and then when they pass each other, that's called a separating aspect. So Tuesday, this they're, they're applying, they're getting closer. Wednesday, they go exactly conjunct at 20 degrees of Pisces. And so because it's a really big part of this new moon energy, we could be feeling the effects pretty early this week. Um, let's start with Monday. So on Monday, the moon will be void of course from about for no about five o'clock pst to the end of the day but before that the moon will be in capricorn and this is going to be interesting monday is going to be interesting because we have the moon in capricorn in the afternoon you know applying in this um connection with the sun sextiling the sun in pisces but also sextiling neptune in pisces but what's really cool about this is that the moon will be conjunct Pluto as this is all happening. And so what this means is that, you know, we're already going to be feeling Monday is a day that you don't want to rest on your laurels. You don't want to really like relax into feeling any certain way about anything. You want to be active. You want to get something done. You want to make progress. You want to, you want to feel like you're accomplishing what you want, what you desire, what feels good to you. And you have the energy to do that. So I would say Monday before four, before five o'clock Pacific time, because that's when the moon goes void. That's when you want to get things done and, and move forward and, and get that momentum going because you'll have the momentum. Now, the tricky thing is that the moon's in Capricorn. It's very hard working and the moon doesn't really want to naturally work very hard. Or the moon just wants to just chill out and hang out. So that could be uncomfortable, especially if you have difficult, depending on who you are in your natal chart, it could be a little bit, it could feel like you're under pressure. It could feel like you are, like you have expectations. It could feel like you, 
like you don't want to do it. <laughs> you could just feel like you don't want to do it. It's something that you just don't want to do, but you know you got to do it. You know that you'll feel better about yourself. This is a day that you want to do things that you know you will thank yourself for later on. That if you just push yourself through it. And that's a big thing with Monday and Tuesday that I'm kind of picking up is that there's a little bit of tension, but it's positive tension. It's the tension that comes with making positive changes in our lives. So when we're all feeling tension, we all have moments of fear or of doubt or insecurity or anxiety or depression or low self-esteem. And it's how we grind through that tension that makes all the difference and ends up defining not only who we are, but the life we're living. So if you're having a crunchy time with the Capricorn moon, it's going to be exacerbated by this Plutonian energy because Pluto, Scorpio, this energy, it's intense. It's not really very forgiving. It's very, it's very much like rise up to this challenge, meet your life, meet who you're going to be, meet your desires, go for it, go for the gold. So the fact that this sextile is happening with the moon to Pisces, to the sun and Neptune and Pisces is saying that you can start to make progress or progress on on this this dream of yours. And we're gonna talk more about the Pisces new moon. I'm not sure if I'm gonna go live for that Friday or Saturday. It's happening kind of like in the early morning hours of Saturday. Um, so we'll see as we're guided. So that's, then there's a bunch of applying aspects on Monday. So that's why I'm saying like, we can still feel this new moon energy pretty early in the week because the energy is already like gaining a lot of momentum. On Tuesday, in the early morning, about 5 a.m. is when the moon in Aquarius is trining Mars in Gemini. This is interesting because the Mars in Gemini, first of all, ever since last Wednesday when the when Mars ingressed into Gemini, people are going to want to really be combative with their words and really push you know, maybe they Googled something or ecosia some information for like five seconds and read like the first link and then all of a sudden they feel like they know a lot about it. So then they're like pushing that in your face and like I would get out of any kind of verbal communicative conflict. I would just take your energy out of the situation or I would just change the subject. I would, I would really not bother. I, I mean, I wouldn't recommend that anyway, but I mean, especially right now, I just really wouldn't. I would, I would, I, 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 I really wouldn't participate in verbal back and forth, okay? So the fact that the moon is trining Mars in Gemini is really nice because that speaks to a lot of ideas, really positive communication. You know, so if you're brainstorming, you might want to get up early and take advantage of some of that energy. Later on in the afternoon is when Venus in Pisces squares the North Node. And honestly, a couple hours after that is when the moon in Aquarius then squares Uranus and Taurus. And then, okay, so what I'm getting from this is more of this tension. These first two days, Monday and Tuesday, they're different forms or different types of tension that are happening. But it's, like I said, it's positive tension to make the changes that you are trying to make in your life. And the tension is really coming from your own resistance. It's your own discomfort. If you really look closely at whatever's going on in your life and really look at the role you're playing and how you're feeling and the the problems or the, the tension or the, the uncomfortableness or however you feel about it, however you feel about a situation or a relationship or something developing or something fading away, if you're closing out things with other people or closing out jobs or situations or you're trying to start something or somewhere in between, really look at how you're feeling because that's really going to be the source of what turns it for you because that's what you have control over, number one. But number two, this is almost like you can realize that something that you were stressed about wasn't, wasn't worthy of it, wasn't even, wasn't, it wasn't what you thought it was or wasn't as it appeared to be or that you can just feel like let yourself off the hook. So the pressure and the tension it's positive in the sense that it that it that it creates it creates the need for us to evolve and you see in the charts of a lot of very accomplished people that they have a lot of tension in their natal charts there's a lot of internal tension that just doesn't go away and they're they're born that way and they live this way and one of them not like i'm like super accomplished but that i understand what it feels like to always 
have something churning, some ideas going or some creativity that wants to get out or some, you know, it, it's, if you're born with it, you, you kind of know how to work with it. So then you can actually use it to get a lot done or because of free will, you can use that energy and just sort of spiral into self-destructive things and, and you and just sort of misuse it. It's a little bit too much dynamism for, for some people, but you can use this, like I said, to, to lean into it, really lean into this tension. And, you know, there's going to be a course correction here. We're coming, we're still coming off of the Virgo full moon and we're coming off of last Thursday, the fourth, last Friday, the fifth of the quarter moon in Sagittarius, where there's this huge square to the nodes, the, the north node and the south node. And so we're still in this energy of choosing a different path for ourselves, choosing a different destiny, one that's more appropriate to our soul's evolution. So on Tuesday with Venus squaring the north node, this is like, there's going to be something that doesn't feel comfortable. Oh God, that freaked me out. That totally freaked me out. This is not the time to have weird things happen. It freaks me out. So it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Let's move on. Oh, oh, that's right. Okay. By Tuesday evening, by Tuesday evening, by about four o'clock is when the moon in Aquarius conjuncts Saturn and Aquarius. So depending on how you've been using the energy, that could bring you down and make you really depressed. Or you could feel so good and so accomplished and just go, ah, and just relax that you that you just did all the hard work first so that you can relax at the end of the day. So that you can just like relieve yourself of like, okay, I, I it was it was hard, it was crunchy, it was tension, but I, I went and I did it and I got it done and I'm so much happier now and it's and that's it's already over. It's done. I can take care of like mundane things or I can just watch T V or whatever it is. So in any case, you're gonna be feeling more serious. You're gonna be taking things more seriously and thinking more seriously. So it's going to be okay. We'll get through the tension of the middle of the day on Tuesday and you'll be happy later on at the end of the day because you don't want it to, like I said, spiral into just feeling crummy or getting into any like victim identities or anything like that. Now, what's really lovely, this could happen Tuesday or Wednesday. On Wednesday is when the sun conjuncts Neptune at 20 degrees of Pisces. This is a huge, like I said, a huge part of the new moon on Saturday. What this is saying on Wednesday is you, you are confident in your beliefs. You are enlightened by your intuition. What, you know, following your gut, following your intuition, following what you're, it's, it's going to be following something immaterial, following a feeling that you feel in your heart, following some other divine guidance. And it depends on how comfortable you are with this kind of thing. If you're someone that makes decisions because you have a team of people that are running diagnostics and running analytics and running ratios and algorithms and going on data and saying, do, 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 don't do that or do, 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 do that, you might not be as comfortable making a decision like this because this is something that you are feeling to do that you are guided to do based on your internal algorithm calculation of the cosmos so this could also be a success point where you find success in a dream coming true this is also okay this is going to be better if you are a spiritualist if you are creative if you're creative this is fantastic i mean keep notebooks by your bedside and you know or a pad a thingy in the shower where you can write stuff down because you can have a brilliantly beautiful divine idea coming through there can be progress regarding a, a project that you're trying to get going there could be just this upliftment an uplifting feeling where you feel success in channeling your own creativity into something material into something concrete like a writer does a writer I don't know how other writers do it, but I, I see things and I, I, I see it all happening and I just really copy it down. <laughs> I'm already watching it happen. I'm already watching it and then I just copy it down. So that's something that it's, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist anywhere except, but I can bring it down into physical manifestation and, oh, it exists. It exists on a piece of paper. 
and then people can take that what's on that paper and turn it into a whole bunch of other things. So if you're creative and if you're spiritual, that's how you really want to channel this energy. Actually, for the whole Pisces new moon or find a way to incorporate that or, you know, really start a new meditative practice or what have you. I'll talk about that later. But for the rest of Wednesday, okay, middle of the day, we are early morning, rather around 10 a.m., is when the moon in Aquarius conjuncts Jupiter in Aquarius. That's a, that's, Jupiter's huge. Jupiter's a really, really big planet. And with the moon connecting with Jupiter, this is like your emotions are gonna be so big and inflated and huge. You're gonna be feeling really, 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 really good. I'm telling you, this could be like, you get a beautiful idea. Actually, it could even, there's something just, glamorous about this there could be something that is just really like actually beautiful neptune rules models um, pluto actually rules like television and media but neptune here it's like it's the energy of projection so what makes a good model you want to be able to visualize yourself with them or you want to like just see the fantasy that their image is creating it's not real there's, there's nothing real about it there are these like impossibly gorgeous beautiful forms geometric forms and they have to have that about them they ha you have to be able to project onto them otherwise it's like doesn't this doesn't work it doesn't work as well um it's also film so any any filmmakers anything having to do with visual art if you're a painter if you draw give yourself time this week to draw like just to just doodle and then you will doodle your next like masterpiece anything visual is going to be really 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 positive okay oh yeah so in the middle of the day with the moon connecting to jupiter you're feeling really positive uplifted um optimistic idealistic because it's an aquarius really really positive so yay and then later on in the evening is when the moon in Aquarius will conjunct Mercury. So that's all going to be happening all day. So expect to be talking about creative projects. Actually, if you have to explain a creative project to someone else, this is a wonderful time, Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even Monday, maybe even Monday to do it. But I would probably pick Tuesday, Wednesday, because you will be able to paint the picture. You will be able to bring it alive to another person that maybe has zero imagination you'll be able to 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 to, to make them see it there's an example i want to use but i can't um so that's wednesday that's wednesday and it's beautiful because people are you're going to be everyone's going to be in this mood of like wanting to see wanting to believe wanting to you know they're going to be more if they just try or if you just try if you've had trouble with visualization work if you try you can have more success so if other people are just trying they'll have more success and then you'll be more powerful in what you're doing on thursday is when we have the moon okay sorry i so i totally forgot so wednesday the moon's going to go void, of course, later in the evening around 7 p. 7.31 Pacific to the end of the day. So you want to do everything, get things accomplished before then so that you can just relax at the end of the day. Um, did I even do... And then Tuesday, I forgot to say that the moon's going to be void from overnight until about midnight-ish. Or the moon's not going to be void on Tuesday. Don't worry about it. Thursday, the moon's going to be void, of course, until about 6.43 in the morning before ingressing into Pisces. So when the moon ingresses the sign that it's going to be new or full in, that's, that's usually when I'll say, now you can feel the lunation that early on. But because of the other aspect with the sun and Neptune on Wednesday, I'm, I'm feeling like we're probably going to be feeling it a little bit before then. Okay, but on Thursday, um, about two o'clock is when the moon in Pisces is going to be squaring Mars in Gemini. So keep a light schedule because there could be interruptions, there could be surprises, there could be, there could be things going on. On your end, don't be tempted to lie because this Pisces energy and then Mars in Gemini 
and then even squaring the nodes and with the quarter moon in Sagittarius last week, there's just there's just gonna there's just a lot of that. There's just and it's gonna be that way for kind of a while. So all you can do is control your energy and who you <laughs> it came up in someone's weekly last week that you can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you. Okay. So if you're seeing people lying to you, try not to hold them, try not to get into a conflict with them. I'm just saying that if you recognize it, you just do what you have to do or make the changes that you can make on the other side of it. Because if people want to lie, they're just going to lie. They have to be someone that wants truth, love, and integrity. They have to be someone that wants to tell the truth. Even fear and respect and getting them to tell the truth that way it's like I just cut them loose so oh I forgot Mercury so Mercury around the middle of the week is actually going to exit the shadow period this is a huge deal because now all planets are direct which means that the next two months or nine weeks are going to give a lot of forward momentum it's the only period the only part of the year that you get that that we're going to get that so you're going to be able to move forward effortlessly into something really important to you now, look back to middle of January. That's when Mercury entered shadow. What have we learned since the middle of January? What have you learned about yourself, about what you want, about what's good for you, about who you are, about how you work since the middle of January? Because this is ending a, a cycle that began around that time, at that time rather. So, you have all this wisdom, all this newfound knowledge, and what are you going to do with it? You have this beautiful Pisces new moon to make a dream come true over the next six months. Okay? So, yeah, just don't, on your end, I just want you to clean your side of the street because that's all, you know, if you start to focus on someone else that's doing you dirty, that's going to lower your vibration. And what is it going to do to them? Nothing. What else is going on that day? And then everything is applying in its aspect for the new moon. So really on that Thursday, it's kind of dreamy. Keep a light schedule. Keep a light schedule and plan to do creative things or meditate, be spiritual, draw, paint. Okay, Friday. Friday, the moon is going to be in Pisces all day, no void. In the early morning around 8 a.m., the moon will conjunct the sun in Pisces. Later on in the afternoon... Later in the morning, I would say, is when the moon is going to square the north node in Gemini. And then late, late, late in the evening, later on, the moon will conjunct Venus in Pisces and then Neptune in Pisces. And really, these aspects are just gearing into place for the new moon. So we're, you're already going to be in the new moon energy on Friday. And what I would say is we're going to go into this more, way more, when I do the new moon live stream. But this new moon with this Piscean energy with Neptune and Venus, there's something really, really beautiful about it. I mean, if you're traveling, and I know what that sounds like, but if you are, if you have to, by water, it's, it's, there's something just really inspiring about this new moon in Pisces. And this whole week is going to be a week about trusting your intuition and trusting what you believe. And allowing that to carry you into a place that requires more belief, spirituality, or creativity than hard numbers and facts and figures. So this is the hard part. The only part of this that's going to be hard is that you want to trust that you know what's what. Because this is like, you don't want to go join a cult, okay? You don't want to take a lover back that's already proven to be a disaster. You don't want to fall into drug and alcohol abuse if you've already been sober and you already figured out what really works well for you in staying sober. So that's the only downside of this energy is that we're going to... We're going to, we're all going to believe, we're all going to have faith in something that requires, requires it. And the trick, the magic trick is going to be being connected with your own self-honesty 
and being honest with yourself and the other people in the situation to know to know it's a good bet, to know that it's a good thing, to know that it's positive, to know that this is the right thing for you and for everyone involved. Because this new moon could have that like self-delusional quality to it where we are just following something because we don't want to take accountability, because we don't want to know what the truth is, or we don't want to accept the truth, or we don't want to face the truth. Whatever can be destroyed by the truth should be. I mean, that's my motto. I mean, it's not my motto. I read it somewhere. But that's if you stick with love, truth, and integrity, and if you really are honest with yourself, if you're really honest with yourself and you align yourself the right way, you'll be okay. But this week is about trusting, trusting in something bigger than three-dimensional material things or proof and letting that trust deliver and letting that trust really deliver you from pressures and fears. That's how you'll know you're doing the right thing and trusting in the right thing when you're delivered from stress and anxiety and fears and worries and it's like how do you feel? Is this something that's making you feel really positive and really good and is it is it is it proving itself to be, you know, making your life easier? Or is it not? So I'm not saying just jump into something without letting it prove itself to you. I'm saying trust your belief. Trust, and you're going to, by Wednesday, you are going to be confident. You, all, you will already be confident in your beliefs, okay? Um, it's just going to be working through a little bit of this tension earlier in the week that it's more about, it's more, it's, it's not even tension of doubt. It's more like, like other things in the situation falling into place and, and making it all kind of fit and, and accomplishing and getting things done with that hardworking Capricorn moon. And here's what I like. Just one thing about Monday and the new moon on Saturday that's going to help you is that the moon on Monday is going to conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. And the whole new moon lunation, this moon is going to connect to Pluto in a really positive way, a sextile. So that will give you the discernment. That will give you the bite that you need. We need that Scorpio energy. We need that Pluto influence to be really straight shooting and get right to the heart of the matter, not mess around and not fool ourselves and not destroy ourselves with what we want to believe, what we want to be true about ourselves, about someone else, about a situation. Okay? So, let's move into the tarot report. Okay, tarot report. Okay, so just really quickly, guys. Ooh, I'm getting, okay, I'm getting this, I don't know if it's gonna come up, but I'm getting this, oh, I already not. I'm getting this strange energy of, um, Someone's bored with someone. Someone's really bored with someone. And it seems like they could be like a youthful person or really immature, but they're bored. I don't know if this is like someone living with you or like a friend or someone you're dating. But I'm getting that someone's sort of like bored of a situation or bored of like, I'm hearing a range. Ooh, I love it. I love when we start with the honest truth. Now, here's what's important about the Ace of Swords: is it's, this could be a contract, um, this could be this could be a huge conversation that you need to have with someone. What I like is that right around the crown, you see the palms. You see this is the balance between severity and grace. So even though you're telling the truth, you want to try to be tactful. There's the Page of Cups. This is that that youthful energy and the Hermit. Interesting. Whoa. There can be someone that you're sort of casting away, like you're sending this person into the darkness is kind of what I'm getting. what it feels like like you have something to say to someone 
Yeah. Whoa. You okay? Thank you. I'm getting annoyed. I'm getting really annoyed. You're bored with this person. This is the end. You've had it up to here. You might be in some kind of petty conflict with them, but I'm getting that it's like. It's like they don't have a job and they're on your couch all day. It's like this, I'm getting like you're just bored with them because they don't do anything or they don't dream big dreams or they don't have ambition or they don't. Um... You've really had it though with this energy. It's, it's something disrupt. I feel like they're living with you. Maybe they're not. Maybe they just like call you every day and they're really like codependent. Um, but I'm just getting that you are, you're like ready for a whole new shift and I'm getting your home life. So I'm going to go with that. But, um, if that doesn't resonate, it's a Scooby snack and you can just learn from the lesson from someone else's lesson. Um, but I'm getting that this is, this is like an arrangement that you're just, I'm getting like a school thing. It's almost like, um, it's almost like someone, a family friend, I'm hearing like a family friend. It could be like a family friend is was staying with you to go to school but then COVID happened and so it like got all like maybe they were home more than you thought they were going to be home and so then it's like I'm getting like they don't clean up after themselves they're selfish lazy we're going to clarify that now it could be like I said your home it could be like just in your energy field too and then more conversation with that eight of wands at the bottom. <laughs> the first, and the first, okay. <laughs> this is going to flip. This is hilarious. This is all going to flip. You're totally like changing the dynamic here. That's so funny. It's like overnight they could be gone. Overnight. And it might even be a love situation. You might, you might even be making a choice about like you move someone out. Okay, um, I'm not getting that it's romantic though with this person. I'm they're showing up as like a page of of cups, which is just emotionally immature. They don't have to be like a younger person. Their energy really feels that way though. They just feel they might just be emotionally stunted in some way, shape, or form. They may not know how to. I'm getting that they've been protected by, they've been they that happened on purpose. This is like they have parents that shield them from consequences and so they don't ever learn how to do things for themselves or they don't learn how to. I've always said that I would never be with someone who, who, who never failed, who never had a defeat, who never had any kind of opposition in their lives. That's just, they won't, they won't know, not only will they not know how to do anything, but they won't know how to relate to me like at all. So that's kind of like this. There's someone in your energy, this is not you, this is someone in your energy field that has been sort of like sheltered or um, protected from consequences, protected from, this could be nepotism or something. Let's start clarifying and we'll just keep the lovers at the bottom of the deck. But you, you are growing, you are evolving and so this is no longer, even though I'm getting, I'm getting like you're not, there's nothing attracting. That's why I'm not getting romantic. That there's just nothing attractive about this person to you. And they're not. Ooh, that's like stunted growth a little bit. It's weird because I'm, I'm getting like, yes, they've been protected. Yes, they've been shielded from consequences and shielded from any real experience is what it's showing up as like energetically, like they don't have any experience and they're just, they just kind of, they're like a, they're showing me a lot of dough. Like they may be really doughy or um, it could just be laziness or it could just be, um, maybe they eat dough or cookie dough or uncooked something. I'm getting like a doughiness or maybe they have like big doughy eyes, like Bambi eyes, like I'm getting brown eyes. What's this Ace of Swords, please? Well, well, well. The star. Okay, this is beautiful. You are inspired. You are going to use this Pisces full moon energy, excuse me, new moon energy. And you're going to change your life in a very meaningful way. 
like I said, I feel like it's really having something to do with the home life, but it doesn't have to be. It could just be your, your base of like your foundation, what makes you feel really, really solid from the core. This could even be that you're talking to someone who is on the internet. The star is Aquarius and the internet. You could be reaching out to someone on TikTok and strike up a friendship, so to speak. If this is love, you're like, to the moon. I don't know, I, I just feel like it's really romantic. Let's take a look at this page. Let's, let's see who this poor person is. Oh, oh, wow, that's interesting. Queen of Wands. This is really interesting, okay. Okay, so this person does have, how do I put this? If they have a career, it was bought. If they have a career, it was given to them. If they have a career, it was because they got an opportunity that no one else gets. If they have a career, it's because of other people moving things around for them, okay? It's created, they don't even think of themselves as lazy. They would not see them, they would not describe themselves as the way I've described them. They see themselves as very hardworking they think that they've gotten where they've gotten on their own merit and it's not the case and it's because they don't have the experience they don't have anything to really relate to whatever experience that they that's so funny they feel like they've gone through so much they feel like they've gone through hardship they feel like this is like a gen z person talking to a boomer about i don't know whatever you know what i'm saying it's like <laughs> but they're kind of spoiled they're kind of they've been indulged they've been really and they're not um i don't i don't think talking to this person is going to help um they're there's they seem very confident in their vanity too there's someone that thinks that they're like very very beautiful very um, sexy specifically and it's like they expect they have expectations because of what's already been given to them or or maybe be it's it could even be i'm seeing something about it's like maybe they thought that their um maybe their grandparents emigrated or migrated and they feel like they've done it <laughs> but they did it they received the benefits of their parents doing what they had done so they might feel like they had done oops sorry i'm so sorry how long has that been like that i'm sorry so they might feel like they had done what their parents had to do but they are not really the ones that did it they're not really the ones that that did the whole thing that migrated from whatever country to whatever country Let's take a look at the Hermit. Ooh, Two of Wands with the Hermit. Okay, there's something interesting and strange about this. This is like, you're sending them away. You're going to like send them away out of your energy field or out of your home. But it's almost like It's like when they were with you or when they're with you, you're, this has to be a family friend because you're showing up kind of single. Like you don't love this person, but they're with you. Yeah, you might be doing like a favor. I'm getting friends, family favors. You're lonely, you need, you, but, yeah, this person definitely, there's nothing like attractive. Um, and there's more indication that you're finding someone else, finding someone that you like. Okay, let's take a look at the five of wands. Why are you feeling this tension? Oh, ace of pentacles. There's an opportunity that you want to take, that you want to act on. 
but you know what? They're getting something from you. I don't like this. This feels very exploitative. This feels like someone's exploiting you. I really don't like that. I don't even care if you agree to it. I don't like it. Oh my God, for some of you, this has to do with a, chil a child or children. For some of you, not for all of you, this, is, um, this has to do with a child or children that, that you're trying to, you're trying to marry their, you're trying to marry the person, you, you, you had this child without marriage and you're trying to marry the person. This is so weird. Okay. Let's just, okay, okay. For those of you, I'm getting both. I'm getting like a split thing. So for some of you, it's the family friend. And for some of you, it's this child thing with your, okay. There may still be time for some of you out there. And this is just, this is Natalie speaking. This is for, just to take up out of it. This is why... I am choosing, if I don't go through a sperm bank or if I don't adopt a child, if I actually harvest my own child with another human being, like in a relationship, I'm not going to do it without being married first. And this is why. Okay. It's a personal choice for everyone to make. And I respect everyone's choice. It's my lifetime and my childhood of growing up as a bastard child that has informed my decision. And further opining from the chair. Do you guys like my background? This, this is like the High Priestess tarot card with the pomegranates and the palm leaves, the tapestry in the background. I'm loving it. So I won't do it without marriage because if I have that child, there's no incentive. There's no commitment after that. There's no reason why someone would want to marry me after if I've already given. For me personally, probably the very best some of the very best gifts that i could give someone is to be a mother of someone's child or children so <laughs> that's my commitment so if, if if they don't marry me first and i have that and i do that i make that commitment there's no incentive i've already given it all up i've already given the best of my life i've already given my genetic whatever i've already had to change my life to accommodate raising this child or children appropriately and you know teaching them telepathy and psychokinesis and that's going to be a big investment for me so um i'm just saying for those of you where there's still time okay but for those of you where you're trying to get this person to marry you abandon that mission focus on you and your children live a good life let it go remember we're getting out of conflict no conflict, no conflict, okay? Okay, what's this judgment about? And did you know that if you adopt from the foster care system, it's free? I've already looked at photo listings. Oh my gosh, we have to take this. Oh, see that picking out. Okay, so we've got the Empress. Oh, we've got the Empress, the Ace of Wands, Two of Swords, and this, again, the Five of Wands. Oh my God, that was so weird. You are changing your timeline. You are change. You are literally changing your destiny like this week. This okay. I'm feeling the. T I'm feeling the, the energy, the story of the family friend thing. There's a stalemate being broken here. You didn't really. You were. You could have Libra Sun Moon Rising, where you were just in analysis paralysis, and you were just like, I can't make my mind up. I can't decide, and boom, something it breaks through. It breaks through the tension, and it has. To, that's so funny. It has to do with having children. It has to do with like the good life. It has to do with like family and um, abundance and like fertility and it could even for some of you just create a fertility just a creative venture that you want to do and want to embark on that was for some reason this person it's almost like you want to do something you want to I'm getting that you want to do your own thing but this person is preventing you because they're just sort of like a like a, um, a mosquito a mosquito Bzzz.
and for some of you, you literally have three aces here. Ace of swords, ace of pentacles, ace of wands. For some of you, you... Um, this is so weird, but for some of you, it's almost like you have to make a decision of, am I going to... Didn't this come up already? It's like, were you... Like, am I going to have kids? Oh no, it came up in someone's weekly last week. It's like a decision, am I going to really commit to um, having children or am I going to just make a lot of money? You can have both. But there's like a, this is not even a big deal. I don't even know why it's showing up in your reading. Maybe it's just your confirmation. But this person, this Queen of Wands, Page of Cups, they're going to be really easy to like send off and send away. Like maybe you just send them back with their parents. Let's take a look at the Ten of Swords because this is like the end and I'm getting the end of an argument, the end of a contract, the end of an agreement. Maybe you agreed, okay, I'll let this person live with me for a year when they're at school or university. And I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's not quite up yet, but you're like putting an end to it because you, you need to like really focus on the truth first of all and going with what you're inspired by going with what you're feeling i would go with that i really would i would really go with that you weren't you weren't you're not getting that for no reason you're not getting that inspiration and that feeling just to like suppress it okay let's take a look at the ten of swords holy moly mastacholi you literally have the king and the queen of swords popping out together. Oh, and I have to take it. I have to take it because we already have that page of cups here. Look at more, more confirmation that this person gets the axe. This person gets the no. This person's being um, sent out into the cold. And this is a decision made by, it looks like two people. Now, okay, thank you. I thought it was going to be two people. She's correcting me. She's saying, no, it's not. It's you. It's your mental, your masculine mental and your feminine mental coming together. Hold on. Wow, this is your, your inner masculine and your inner feminine coming together and agreeing like, yes, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put an end to this. We're going to commit ourselves to... There's something so luscious and abundant. This empress, she's like constantly pregnant. This is constantly fertile with creativity, with imagination, with maybe even children. Um, but this is like around her, there's just so much. There's so much wheat and rivers and like everything. That's what you're going for. That's what you're choosing. <laughs> yes, this person, this immature person is going to feel like they're being cast out left aside, abandoned in the cold, but honestly, they need this experience in order to really grow and define themselves with a real identity. They may be relying too much on their good looks, or they may be relying too much on, like, it's almost like entitled overconfidence. Like they're, they're showing up as confident for things that they didn't earn. They need this experience. They will thank you later on. Okay. Let's take a look at the Wheel of Fortune. This is you just like... Phew. Actually, this is even fate. This is something fated. And if you are starting this week feeling like something is fated, you're going to see proof that it is. Oh my God. The seven of cups this is something that you are like daydreaming about you are just like full of oh and i have to take it oh my god oh my god okay i'm not going to take all that i'm just going to take this could be something pretty explosive but like in the best way possible i'm going to keep it at the bottom of the deck though and that that brings us back to the first energy, which is always the strongest energy. Ace of Swords, the star. Ace of Swords, Seven of Cups, and the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, you're really cutting through the fog here. You're really, 
be really careful. You don't want to take advice from this person. This person doesn't have the experience to inform you. This person doesn't have the maturity, the emotional maturity to help you. I don't think you are, but in case you are, I wouldn't talk to this person about it. I really wouldn't. They're going to just tell you whatever is going to serve them, which is going to be to keep exploiting you for whatever they're getting out of it. Okay. You're definitely cutting through, you're fantasizing, but there's also this huge, it's almost like you didn't know where something was going to go and you're waiting. And as you're waiting, you're fantasizing and visualizing and then boom, you get the answer. The truth comes down and it's really positive. And like I said, it could even bring you together with another person. So I'm seeing that you're getting rid of someone that's kind of lazy, entitled. Maybe they've always been supported their whole lives and they've never felt consequences. And that's just, they're never going to learn that way. You're getting them out of your life or you're at least putting up a really big, healthy, strong boundary. You've really had it up to here. There might even be a point or something. I, I can't tell if there's something that they do. I don't think it's something that they do. I'm just really picking them up as just like more annoying than like really, I don't think they're out to get you. I don't think they're like a big threat. I'm just picking up that you're just annoyed with them and something you've had it up to here or something else turns with another person that's like a real match for you. The tower and the star are right next to each other in the tarot and the keys there. This comes right after this and it's like something has to blow up. And then when it does, it like heals with the star energy. It just feels better. So it's going to be a, a buildup of tension and pressure, but it just releases. And you have to have the faith. You have to believe. Okay. Let's get divine feather for you. Really look at every, every person in your life. Look at what, what is motivating them to be with you or to be associated with you or to be your friend or you, whatever. Like, are they like, is there an equal give and take? Because I don't like this exploitation vibe I'm getting and I don't even care if you agree to it. Every moment of life is a different moment. Oh, God. OK, we have the pelican. <laughs> Choose to follow the path of forgiveness and raise your vibration. We've got nut hatch. Stay grounded and welcome the new knowledge and perspective coming to you. And then we have the turkey, the power to heal the earth is within you. Mm, this is a lot of energy. Blue Jay at the bottom of the deck. The time is right to access and master your abilities. Do so with humility and control. You guys don't want to meet a psychic that has a huge ego. They are insufferable. And then these other two ostrich, the choice is clear for you now. Follow your, follow the wisdom and truth you feel in your heart. This is important. The choice is clear for you now. Follow the wisdom and truth you feel in your heart. Boop. And then peacock, inherent wisdom is emerging at this time. Watch it and ready yourself for a rebirth. So you are becoming more wise throughout this entire process too. Maybe you're not letting yourself be exploited anymore. Maybe you have like a really big house and you're like, yeah, come live with me. And everyone's like, okay. And it's like, they take it for granted. Take you for granted. Don't like that. I do not like that. And then there's forgiveness. Yeah, I wouldn't blame this person. They're like, they've just, they've been like, let them go. Let them learn on their own. Let them. And honestly, there's going to be something to cushion this fall. I'm almost sure of it. Like what they're going to be feeling so kicked to the curb, but that's just their subjective perspective. It's their subjective interpretation of this experience. It's really not that bad. I'm sure they have. A, they, I'm sure they have. They're going to be OK. OK. Um, stay grounded and welcome the new knowledge and perspective coming to you. The power to heal the earth is within you. Yeah. So, you know, maybe next week will be more. The next reading will be more about like what's new starting. This is definitely about closing something out, closing out this thing with this person. Yeah, don't like be forgiving with this person. Don't let yourself really like hate them or feel animosity towards them. They're just, um, 
I wouldn't go as far as to feel pity for them either. They're making their own choices to think and behave and feel certain ways. They have so much... I'm getting that every day. You might even be thinking that like every day you can do something incredible. Every day you have so much resource around you. Every day. And so be careful. Watch yourself. I don't want you to get really tense and really upset about like all that they're not doing or like everything that they're throwing away or all the things that they're wasting. Don't even go there. That's their choice. It's their karma. All you're going to be doing is getting them out of your energy space and out of your energy field. You're going to feel, you're going to be, it's a mental decision. This is like a logical thing for you. It's like, well, one plus one equals two. This is, this is what just has to be done. That there's going to be that tie breaker or that, that stalemate breaking thing. And it's going to be because of a brand new start with something that you really believe in. And this might even be a person that has children. They may be a mother. They may have motherly vibes. They may be representative of a creative project that's very very fertile but what, that's what it is that's what's going to win out for you here is being creative whether that is creative with your genetics or with cre or being creative with your um ideas okay or with your work all right guys i love you so much forever and ever and always next week is going to start the week of separate videos with the weekly astrology and then I will come out with more probably more general energy shift tarot readings throughout the week so probably one on Monday and then maybe one on Tuesday or maybe one on Monday and then maybe one later on in the week we'll see as I am guided and as the message is coming through I'm feeling really great in my patreon schedules and staying really on top of everything and doing classes and doing everyone's privates and doing everyone's transit trackers and doing the monthlies and the weeklies, like it's getting really, really to a, a place I'm very happy with. So I'm excited for the new moon in Pisces. Like I said, it's at the top of my chart. So I'm feeling good in my psychic abilities and everything that I'm doing to help everyone else feeling their, because here's the thing about being psychic is that it's, it's not as, imp it's not for me personally, it's not impressive that I'm psychic. Okay. I know that already. I want to help you feel psychic and feel your own ability and understand yourself in a whole much more magical way. It's more exciting when you feel it, when you have the experience. Like this person that needs to have experience. But I'm a spiritualist, so it's different. Okay? I'm just, f sorry, I'm, she's just... You guys know my readings are like super long, so... Your hard work is paying off, thank you. And you're very close to achieving your goal, so just hang in there. You might have, I might even be catching you, catching you kind of late where you've already known that you don't want this person around anymore. And if so, you're almost there. Like you're literally, you're really close to achieving your goal and all the hard work that you've been doing that they're probably profiting off of is going to bring you to the place that you're meant to be soon. Okay. I love you guys. Take care. I will see you next week. And until then, my dearies, many beautiful blessings upon all of your beautiful heads, darlings. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.